We begin by praising Allah. And we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all of those to follow him up until Yawmul Qiyamah. Now every single Jumu'ah has been narrated from some of the female companions that they memorized Surah Qaf from the mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the khutbah. Because every single week he would recite from Surah Qaf. Every single khutbah was it was revolving around Surah Qaf. It's something that we should also, as Imams, be trying to revive as a sunnah. And there's many powerful messages in Surah Qaf. Allah, He says, do you not see above you the skies? أَفَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَوْقَهُمْ كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا Have you seen how Allah constructed it above you? Have you ever stood outside and looked at the skies above you? It is the largest thing in this life that you will ever see. Do you see any flaws in it? وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوجِ There is no flaw in it. Do you see any cracks? Everything is perfect. And this denotes the power of Allah. Allah, He says, Two ayat later, That in the signs of Allah is a tabasira. It's insight, basira, insight for the abdim munib. And also dhikra, a reminder. What is the abdim munib? What is the tabasira? And what is the dhikra? We'll go into it. See, first and foremost, you and I, we need to realize that the creation of Allah around you, his ayat, the dhikr, the Qur'an, it will not benefit you. It will not benefit you unless you are the abdim munib. Unless you have a quality known as the qalbin munib. What is the qalbin munib? Allah, he goes, if you go travel a little bit further into Surah Qaf, he says, a powerful, powerful ayat. وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدَ The Jannah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, it will be brought close. للمتقين, for those who had taqwa of their Lord. غَيْرَ بعيد, Not far anymore. In this life, you and I, we usually see that attaining Jannah is something difficult. Very far away. But Allah is saying, غَيْرَ بعيد, It's not far, it's close. It's closer than you think. It's shaitan who makes you and I think that we are very far away from Jannah. What does Allah continue say? Again, we see the Qalbin Munib. Allah will say that this is what you were promised. For every single Awab and Hafiz. Now, you need to understand what is the Awab and what is the Hafiz in order to understand what the Qalbin Munib is. So that we can attain the Qalbin Munib. So that we can be the Abidin Munib that Allah he was mentioning at the beginning of Surah Qaf. So what is the Awwab? The one who continuously turns to Allah. We have another term, Tawwab. We have to know that the Awwab and the Tawwab as described in the Quran is two totally different things. The Tawwab is the, one who, the person who conducts Tawbah. He repents to Allah. The one who is Awwab, whether he sinned, whether he hasn't sinned, he's still turning back to Allah. No matter what he does on a daily basis, he's always turning to Allah. And the Hafiz, we're not talking about the Hafiz al-Qur'an here. The Hafiz is the one who preserves the obligations of Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ihfadillah yahfadkum. If you preserve Allah, then Allah will preserve you. To preserve Allah means to preserve your relationship with Allah, your bond with Allah. And that begins with your salah. That begins with fulfilling your obligations. Those who have not fulfilled their obligation to Allah, then Allah does not guard them. <coughs> For those who do fulfill their obligations to Allah, Allah, He settles all of their affairs around them. Every single difficulty that they may be going through in their life, 
Allah, he settles it for them. He gives them qana'a, contentment. They find peace in their lives, no matter what issue they may be going through. But usually we tend to doubt. So usually what happens is, Allah, he says, again, look at the skies above you. Going back to the ayah now. Do you see the perfection of Allah? That when Allah puts you through a difficulty, do you think there will be any flaw in it? You don't find any flaws in the skies above you. How could you think that when Allah deals with you, there will be some flaw in it? That Allah, he made some laws for you to abide by. The sharia. Did you think that there's a flaw in those shari'as? In the, in the laws of Allah? Do you think there would be a flaw in it? In the way you have to deal with the people? In the way you have to deal with Allah? In the way you have to deal with your own self? If you abide by the sharia, do you think that any flaw will come into your life? وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوجِ There is no flaw in the creation of Allah. And so Allah, he says, regarding the one again, the awwab bin Hafiz, he says in the next ayah, مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانِ مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانِ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ A powerful, powerful ayah. Whoever feared the most merciful, unseen. Now usually in this day and age, living in the you know, Western society that we live in, you he you'll usually hear people come and say, Allah is all loving. That's it. Just all loving, all merciful. You can be the worst person, you still go to Jannah. Go and kill every single person, you'll still go to Jannah. Go and be a rapist, a serial killer, you'll still go to Jannah. This is what the Christians claim. God is all loving. This is what they all claim. But the believer, for him it's different. Man khashiya rahman Whoever feared the most merciful, deep relationship. Why would you fear? Why would you feel afraid of the most merciful? You need to know who Ar-Rahman is first and what the meaning of this name is. That Ar-Rahman, the English language, it is not comprehensive enough to capture the meaning of Rahma. But the closest, the closest meaning to Rahma is care. That Ar-Rahman, the entirely caring towards his creation, compassionate, merciful. He's tender and he's gentle with his creation. So why would you fear the Rahman when he's compassionate to his creation? It's because when you start to value his Rahmah in your life, you begin to feel afraid of losing that Rahmah. Man khashiya rahman That out of love for Allah, you fear to lose closeness to Him. You fear to lose His Rahmah in your life. Knowing that once you lose the Rahmah of Allah, everything turns upside down. Everything becomes chaotic in your life. So man khashiya rahman bil ghaib Whoever feared the most merciful in the unseen. Meaning not just when you're with the people. Usually when we're with the people, we come to the masjid, everybody is the most pious of people. But what are you doing behind closed doors? When nobody is watching you, man khashiya rahmana bil ghaib, whoever feared the most merciful out of love for him in the unseen, you didn't go near those sins late at night. Even when you come to the people, you, the way you dealt with the people, you ensured that you used your tongue wisely. When it came to your eyes, you used it wisely. When it came to your ears, when it came to your spouses, when it came to your children, and your parents, you ensured that you stuck by the sharia. Why? Because you didn't want to lose the rahmah of Allah in your life. Rather, you wanted the rahmah of Allah because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that none of you, myself included, none of us can go to Jannah based on our own actions alone. None of you will go to Jannah based on your own actions alone. The Sahaba asked, even you, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, even me, the Prophet of Allah, the most beloved, I cannot go to Jannah. I cannot go to Jannah. Unless Allah has Rahmah upon me. Unless Allah grants me his Rahmah, then I can go to Jannah. So this is what the believers, they understood. And so because of that, وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ they went to Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah with a penitent heart, a softened heart, filled with humility, that they knew that Kullu Bani Adam Khattah, every single son of Adam is a sinner. So how are we supposed to stay away from it when we all falter? It's because the one who understood that he needs the Rahmah of his Lord, even the smallest of sins, can shut that door. 
Because it is not about the insignificance of the sin that we commit in our lives. That's not what it is. It's about the tremendous one you are disobeying in your life. That he is Allah Azim. He is tremendous. He is magnificent. Intimidating. Intimidating also. That's one of the meanings of Azama. That you realize it's not about the smallness of the sin. Maybe I'm disrespecting my parents. Maybe I'm using vulgar language. Maybe I'm not lowering my gaze. It's not about that. It's about the tremendous or the, the magnificence of the one who I'm returning to. So because of that, they felt penitent. They felt sorry for their sins. That you know what? I do commit sins on a daily basis. Nobody is free from it. So they always turned back to their Lord. Man rahman wa jaa bi qalbin munib. To those it will be said, udkhuluha bi salam. Enter in peace. Enter Jannah in peace. Udkhuluha bi salam. Enter Jannah in peace. That is the day of khulud. That is the day of eternity. Allahu akbar. Now when we begin to love Allah and we'll finish on this note, there's something we should realize because we have to be like the anbiya. They are our role models. We are sinners ourselves. But Allah, he says regarding Lut alayhi salam, when he said to his people who are committing the sin that we all know of, it's widespread today. Qala inni li'amalikum min al He said that I am not just against your sin. I am disgusted with your sin. That I am infuriated with your sin. This is how we are supposed to be towards all sins. Now you'll probably be thinking, this imam is saying we have to hate our sins, the very same sin we are doing up until the point that it makes us angry that I become angry with my own sins yes that is what you have to do not because Imam is saying it not because Mufti is saying it not because father is saying it or mother is saying it because Allah said so in the Quran inni min al that when you and I fall into sins and even then we still hate those sins for the sake of Allah that is what will lead us to Tawbat al nusuha to sincere repentance because for repentance to be accepted, it has to feel, you have to feel remorse in your heart. But if you don't hate that sin, if you don't hate all the different vices you see around you, then you're not going to feel remorse. Then you're not going to go to Allah with the qalbi munib. And then for you then, because of that, it will be said, when your record is given to Allah, also in Surah Qaf, al fi jahannama kulla farid anid. Throw into Jahannam every stubborn person, every ungrateful person. Every person who would stop, they would try to prevent good. They would try to prevent good. That is what will happen. They will be flung into Jahannam. You and I are not safe from that. So we value the Rahmah of Allah. And we continue living by this. No matter who we are, no matter who we may be, what title we have, it makes no difference. Because when it comes to sins, inna akramukum indallahi atqakum. The best of you in the sight of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa of him. May Allah grant us all a good understanding. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikri al-Hakim. Aqulu qawli hadha, subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubi ilayk. الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد before we end the khutbah there is two points to go over very quickly and the first is your salah your salah many of us may be on holiday but know that your salah is never on holiday. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah says that He never created any of you, jinn and man, except to worship Him. You eat His food that He provides for you on a daily basis. You breathe His air that He provides for you on a daily basis. You enjoy the relationships He gave you on a daily basis. You enjoy everything around you, the work He gave you, the rizq He gave you, everything, it comes from Allah. But then, you don't offer salah, 
You don't fulfill salah. You don't thank the one who made you. Thanking him is not just about saying alhamdulillah. It's about ensuring that your obligations are fulfilled. Man khashiyar rahman. What did Allah say regarding them? Likulli awabin hafiv. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the only difference, the only difference between the believer and the believer is the salah. You leave that salah, you have committed kufr. The Sahaba before us, they didn't make any differentiation between this. If you abandon your salah, you have committed kufr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, take just the asr salah. Just the asr salah. Hafidhu ala salawati wa salatil wusta. That ensure that all of your salah are preserved, especially the middle salah, especially salah al-asr. He says in another narration that the one who misses his asr salah, Allah turns all of his deeds to dust. Now, guys, men of the ulama, because of that, they also said, if you're not fulfilling your obligation to Allah, your five salah, take all of your nawafil, Allah, he doesn't accept it. Unless you have the intention in your heart that I am going to try my best to fulfill my salah. Because your relationship with Allah begins with your salah. May Allah grant us all steadfastness upon our salah. May Allah grant us all the ability to implement it in our lives consistently up until we return to Him. Qala Allah Ta'ala, in